Hi, this is Robert Patrician, and because apparently your mouse and keyboard are broken, you're still listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 85. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, hello, Norman. Hey, Dan. Um, uh, I don't know what to say. It's been a rough start. Oh, yes, definitely has. Yeah. The reason why I sound bad right now because... I don't have my normal recording device. It, I, I don't know where it goes. But anyway, um, how are you, Dan? Improvisation is a really awesome thing. So you know, like if you listen to lines, I've been, I did podcasts from my Android tablet before. So yep, go deal with oh. it. True indeed, true indeed. Oh, um, re- you recently had an announcement, right? Oh yes, I did. Care to share with the class? Oh yes, of course. Yep, uh, we've just announced Singapore's first My Little Pony convention, which will be held from 21st to 22nd, June 2014. You can check it out at cantalotuniversity.com. Yes, it's called Cantalot University. It'll be happening in Singapore from the 21st to the 22nd of June 2014. Everything you need and want to know is on our website. So once again, that's cantalotuniversity.com. Awesome. I might enroll soon. Yay. So also joining us is James Quark or James Pork. Hello there, Norman. How's it going? Fine, thank you. So um, the name change... Uh, why? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's Halloween. Uh, by the way, I have a very weird feeling of deja vu. I think we have already done this. I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably <laughs> nothing. Yeah, it could be. It could be. I, I wish we had deleted tracks or something, but hey, the show must go on, as they say. Well, so, maybe they changed anyway. something in the Matrix. That's why I feel deja vu. Uh, weird. Mm, true, anyway. True. <laughs> so anyway, moving on to our next person on the call, it's Sketchy Sounds from EFN. Hello, hello. So, Sketchy, how are you? I'm doing quite well, thank you. I've been uh, working on some audio earlier on for Ask Britannia. I've been working on a Nightmare Night promotion. Which I have been doing in the voice of Sweating and Coffee Lemmy Level Nocturne, fun of the bad ponies that we have on the tumble. <laughs> oh, thank oh. you, darling. And that's been fun. That's going to be going up later tonight, actually. We'll be putting that up where... Basically, we're, what we're doing is we're running a little uh, competition for our followers to submit ideas for costumes to put our characters into, and the best ones we'll make use of. There might even be some prizes involved. We don't know yet, but uh, we're considering it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, well, people should go there and play in the contest because it sounds like fun. And yes, moving yes. on to our guest for this week is Robert Patri- I should have asked you this earlier. Uh, how do you say your last name, Robert? My last name is Patrician. It's Roman for ruling class. Ah, Patrician. So Robert Patrician from Ask Pun, Tumblr. Yes, so I am the moderator doing, of Ask Pun. So how are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing quite well. We're finishing up uh, the new system for the writing collaboration, where we'll be able to once again recruit writers to the project. We're also developing a series of tutorial videos and uh, orientation videos and such, which have a very good return on investment for improving the project. Uh Ah, sounds like a business, but I think we'll leave that for later. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is housekeeping. So, well, uh, if I remember right, we have a special guest to read this for us, if I am right. Isn't that right, Lados? I believe you are correct. So, a little announcement for you all. On November 2nd, the NBS show will be participating in Extra Life 2013, a 25 hours gaming marathon to raise money for Sick Kids Hospital Toronto. How nice of them. What you can expect during that 25 hours gaming marathon is to be part of the live stream with Norman Sanzo. You can even join him in a game and possibly see him lose his temper. Something you don't have much of. You can interact with guests during the live stream and get your questions answered if you have any, although I doubt it. The guests that will be joining us are friends of the show, James Cork, Sketchy Sounds from Everfree Network, and the talented Lionheart cartoon from Duo Cartoonist, friends you probably would never have. We would appreciate it if you could donate to this good cause. Together, we can help children and improve their experience in the hospital. All right, let's get back to testing. Well, thank you, Gladys. Oh, my. (laughs) 
friends Aye. that you will never have. That is very mean. Well, Ledos isn't us. very isn't a very nice pony to start with. She's not a pony to begin with. <laughs> uh, tr- true that, true that. Very but true. anyway, please do. Anyway, please do help us with this because it's for the kids, as they say. And links to the donation can be found in the show notes. So, Robert, I hope you can join us for that stream because the more the merrier, as they say. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Awesome. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Halo 4 Facebook post pictures of Best Pony. <laughs> uh, that's so nice. Rodney. To... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's no, not It appears Rodney. to be that it was Fluttershy on this occasion, my good sir. That's not Best Pony. You lie to me. Uh, uh, you do realize she did win that poll a little while back. That, was that poll was hub. completely rigged. <laughs> They pulled out Richard Nixon on it. They sent people to investigate. No, oh, that was cool. completely... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Anyway, um, uh, the Halo 4 Facebook page recently posted a picture of Fluttershy done by No Agony using their Forge map editor. What's so special about it? Well, it was only done by using assets from the game and nothing else. Take a look and judge it for yourself. Links can be found in the show notes. Taking a look at it, actually, um, I've just clicked to take a look at it. That is pretty impressive, I have to say. Yeah, it's using all the game's engine, like, um, assets, really, um, like the guns. Yeah, they've just laid it out like a mosaic. That's really impressive. Mm. People have if, you told, even... if you didn't tell me this was made in Halo, I would think it's probably, like, cake icing. People mm. have done crazy things with uh, the uh, Halo's Forge uh, a mod. I think I saw someone make... Uh, a, 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 a Van Gogh picture with it, like nice. the yeah, like I think it was like Starry Night over Paris or something like that. I don't quite remember that one, but they they made one of his paintings with uh, the Halo Four engine, and I was like, wow, sweet. You guys have so much free time on your hands. You all you all know Minecraft, right? And what people do there? It's pixel uh-huh. art in three D. Oh, how much more, how, how much free time do you have? No, I think it's funny how people take something that is supposed to be mindless uh, fun and they turn it into a, a tool for absolute creativity and expression. Yeah. It's That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting well, for someone well. to draw a pony in Worms World Party with a blowtorch. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be something. Uh, well, so Robert, what do you think? Well, as someone who has played a bit of Minecraft, I think that any expression of creativity is good. That they're able, they they saw this set of tools and they went in a direction that people wasn't and that people weren't anticipating, is uh, very good on them. It's always good to see people taking something on the internet and creating more from it. So the internet is a great place of collaboration where people are able to take tools and do things with them that were simply unexpected. That yeah. is true. That is true. And I am guessing content creator. I'm guessing the people who created this, they're really happy with what. Other, other people can do with it because, well, like you said, it's amazing. And it was not meant for this, but people made it their own. Mm-hmm. So anyway, let's move on to the next news topic. And Dan, why don't you take this one? Okay. So, Toys R Us now Pardon? exclusively announced the My Little Pony Chinese New Year brushable. It's not even Chinese New Year yet, but it looks like Toys R Us are at it again with another exclusive this time around, it's going to be a Chinese New Year Pinkie Pie package in a Chinese New Year theme, theme box. Links can be found in the show notes. She looks absolutely adorable with that hair and that Cheong Sam looking dress. She does. What do you all think about it? Well, I think it's awesome that they are acknowledging that kind of like uh, uh, celebration. And the design looks really cute despite it being the, the, um, the you know, the mold the same model that we have seen other Pinkie Pies look. But I like the, the attention to detail on the box. And personally, I approve of uh, this design. Uh, uh, this I decision. want one. Looking yeah, I want her, one too. Um, that looks to be the fashion style Pinkie Pie mold they've got there, because I've got one here and she's in the exact same pose. Um, but I really love what they've done. Um, it's quite creative and uh, the design on the dress is especially... Intricate. Interesting. It's quite intricate. Yeah, I really like what they've done there. That's very pretty. The only thing I can see that I was just about to mention that I said the I was going to say the only thing I can see there, which looks like it might be a bit of a nightmare for some people, is the fact that she is glittery, and glittery ponies have this uh, tendency to shed their glitter on everything. So if you oh, do yes. buy one, watch out for yeah. that. You you I, will end up with sparkly fingers. 
I testify for that. I have the entire collection of the pony, the sparkly pony blind bags. You cannot touch those without turning your hand into uh, into Edward Cullen's hand from Twilight. It's so sparkly; it's ridiculous. Now I feel so I feel sorry for married bronies because they go get one of these ponies and they're like, oh, it's so nice, and they rub their face on it from like, oh, yay, I have a pony, and then they get home and the wife's like, oh, you went to a strip club, you're covered in glitter. <laughs> Well, no, Pinkie wasn't... Pie gave it to me. Who's Pinkie Pie? <laughs> well, hey, come on. That kind of stuff. Super name. You know, with a, with a very, 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 very deep mind on the gutter, you can think that all the pony names are kind of like stripper names. Yeah. Twilight Sparkle, <laughs> Rainbow Dash, Princess Pie. List, yeah. Madame Rarity. <laughs> that just makes sense. <laughs> now, oh, stripper Princess Luna, she's going to oh, rock that... your night. <laughs> Say this Hasbro, has, Hasbro has done an amazing job in localizing the product for different markets. I mean, if you've seen the translations of My Little Pony into so many different languages, that dramatically improved the viability of the show versus if they had only marketed it to the United States. I will only be satisfied when I see a bullfighting pony. <laughs> Ooh. Well, you know, Pinky's wearing red. You know what? I want to see a bullfight in Fluttershy because she already bullfighted that Minotaur. So I think she should be the bullfighter. <laughs> well, yeah, it does make sense. Does, 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 does. But what I really, really love about this box art is when you turn it around and there's the Chinese word for prosperity right there. It's called Fu. And Pinky is posing as part of that word. Like what? That really? is really cool. Yeah, if you if you go and look up the word "foo," I'll paste it into the the chat later. If you look up the word, she's posing. The word is made out of two sections, a left and a right. She's posing as the left side of the word. Ah, see, that's something I wouldn't have picked up on. I mean, I'm I I can't read uh, Chinese script myself, so I would not have picked up on that. But that is a nice little extra bit of attention to detail. Huh. So that's part of uh, Pinkie Pie's martial arts. You know, Pinky Foo. Oh, and, God. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised because uh, the Chinese believe if you hang that word upside down, it brings double the luck. So I won't be surprised if she's actually doing a headstand on the back. <laughs> that's, that's, cool. that's, really, that's, that's just pinky for you. She does that. You know what, Dan? I yes. think this news topic especially for you. Thank you. Says that wow. it's, it's supposed to be a proverb. It directly translates into horse until you succeed. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I need to go look that up in the idiom dictionary. <laughs> I hope this gets successful so we get an entire line of uh, cultural theme uh, uh, ponies. Asian ponies. No, not, not just Asian. We have, the, we, have, uh, we have China. We could have France. We could have oh, Italy, my gosh. If they wanted the British when we already have Britannia. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have that Bronny Days mascot, the French one. Yeah, Madame Banana. Now, the question is, if they're marketing uh, My Little Pony in Asian markets, do they have to make the eyes smaller? Oh. <laughs> oh that's no, no, no. Don't you see? That's why they work so well, because that's how Japanese people see uh, uh, Western people. They see them with big eyes, tall and all that. They don't, ma- they don't make the eyes smaller. They have to make the eyes bigger. So it's like 80% of the pony's eyes. <laughs> It'll be like a giant eyeball looking at you. Well, let's inject, let's inject to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Robert Patrician. I hope I said it right because I have a derpy memory. Robert Patrician, yes. Yeah, Robert Patrician. He's the guy behind uh, As Pun Pony Tumblr. And, well, he is the head of it. And, well, he runs it like a business. How are you, Robert? I'm doing quite well. So having fun yet? And I'm really sorry for the derps. Uh, it's quite all right. I deal with over 150 artists on the project. I have my share of daily derps. <laughs> okay, so mind telling us who you are and what you do to the people who might not know you? Okay, my name is Robert, and I'm the moderator of Ask Pun. I am the managing editor. So in the process flow of the comic, I am the one who approves finished scripts, sends them to the production queue. I also do any final editing on the artwork. Uh, I don't uh, do any major corrections, but things like text effects, transparency effects. Then I post it into the Tumblr posting queue, and it then waits for its turn to go onto Tumblr. So I, th- I have a bit of a two-step process. I also manage the infrastructure development, artist training, and recruitment. Mm, that's interesting. So I- I'm guessing a, there's a, a job. Two- Is that your full-time job? No, it's it's not a job. It's a hobby. As I put it, <laughs> so- as I put it for the the artists. 
they always say, man, you're such a reasonable boss. You're so nice. Why are you so nice? It's because professionally, I have to be in. That's not a word. Professionally, the carpet outside my office is torn up because of people dragging their feet on the way in and, and stained with all their tears and sweat on the way out. <laughs> well, uh, what do you do professionally since that's kind of like a mandatory question after what you just told us? I'm a project manager. I handle projects where it hasn't been done before. So, for example, if a company says, okay, we need to build a new factory uh, in a place that we've never built a factory before. For example, we need to build this facility on a glacier. Well, we've never done that before, so we need a project manager to handle all the things that are going to come up that have never come up before. So, for example, if a company builds garages every, you know, every single day, it's more of an operations issue. While if they need okay. to go build a special order one, it's a project one. Mm, that's interesting. So, like I was saying before, I can see there's a two-part question, one in the front and one in the back. Like what goes in front that we all can see and what goes behind the scene that we don't know. So the obvious no, it, question is, um, how do you start? Well, how did it all start? Like how did the idea came up? Well, the originally, uh, when I was first introduced to Tumblr ponies, I was looking at them and I found a lot of the smaller ones before I found a lot of the bigger ones. And I was looking, I'm like, oh, this is a great comic. I'm going to be following this because I've always been a bit more interested in the brony community and creativity than the show itself. And I'd be watching Ooh. them and I'd see a comic it's like, hey, we just celebrated 50 followers. Hooray. And they post a link. I'm like, wait, you have 67 comics and 50 followers. That doesn't feel right. More people need to know about this. And I saw more and more comics. And I'm like, Okay, more people need to know about these, not just the big ones. And so I thought with my abilities, mm -hmm. I could create a comic that was specifically intended to get popular and then use that popularity to do what gets most tumblers more followers, crossovers. So the whole point of Ask Pun is to do crossovers. Now, the original scope was a lot narrower. The original scope was I was looking around for an artist because if you can't draw, you can still – do a pony tumbler, you just need to go hire an artist. And there was an artist, C.S. Moore, she was doing a $1 sketch sale. And I said, hmm, uh, can I buy more than one sketch? She said, sure. I said, great, I'd like to buy a 100 of them. The deal was $100 for 100 sketches. It was going to be one comic a week, uh, sketch quality for two years. And in setting that up, and I paid in advance. So the artist was like, wow, this is amazing. I need it. I really was doing a sketch scale to have money. Now I don't have to worry about doing that. Thanks. So like I said, I'm a reasonable boss on this project because I have to be in it. That's not a word. Professionally. So I then set up a bit of infrastructure. So I had a Google document as a scripts list. And the artist could then just reserve whichever ones uh, she wanted saying, okay, I want to do that one, that one, and that one. Because I figured, okay, I can easily come up with 150 ideas. And let the artist pick which hundred of those they want to do. That way, they're going to be more inspired to put in better effort. As um, And then, once I had that infrastructure developed, set up, uh, I saw another artist who was having a dollar sale. So I'm like, hey, uh, can I get a bunch from you as well? And it kind of grew from there. The infrastructure uh, kept pace with a number of artists. So we were able to set up like three or four artists initially who are willing to work for a dollar a panel because it was something fun and they liked the scripts. And we've somehow mm -hmm. grown from uh, a uh, once a week sketch quality comic for two years to a daily full color comic planning to go for a minimum of one full year after the end of the show. Wow, that, that is wow. interesting. So I'm um, sorry, guys, before we continue on, I forgot to ask Robert the four basic questions and how could I? So anyway, um, who's your favorite character? Hmm, my favorite character, I would probably say it has to be the ones, cre as a whole, the ones created by the fandom, the ones that aren't trying to be a clone of the, uh, the ones on the show, ones that try and go and create a new direction. So uh, I would say that the uh, three the three characters that inspired me to start Ask Pun were uh, Ask Stitches. That comic doesn't update much anymore, but we've managed to send it a lot of followers. Ask Bright Eyes, which is still going follower, and Ask Windswept, which has since become the mod tumbler for uh, Ask. That that artist has since gone on to do Ask Stories from the Front. Mm. Ah, okay. That will be so, Severus. Ah, the the, yes. the artist of stories from the front is Severus. Ah. Right. Mm. His original okay, his so the, his original comic was about a sea pony, and that was one of the ones that inspired me to start Ask Pun. Mm -hmm. So mm. basically, um, is these three characters that you yeah, that are your favorite? Well, I would well, I would say that they are the ones that inspired me the most. 
Uh, any yes, from the show, what you can see? From the show. Hmm. From the show, I would have to say Rarity, as she's a successful business pony. You look at you look at uh, Applejack, the other one actually running a business, and they're always having horrible financial problems. Well, why is that? Let's see. They have a line for cider going all the way back to town. They run out of cider before they finish before they run out of line, and they don't increase their price. Gee, I wonder why they're always in financial troubles. Well, they could have uh, <laughs> government backing from the princess. <laughs> Okay, what about your favorite episode then? Because I'm going to guess it's a favorite episode. See, I would say favorite episode would just be that the the first two episodes. Because oh. what got me into uh, Ask Pun, I mean, sorry, not Ask Pun, but actual My Little Pony. It wasn't forums and notices and all that. It was, I was on YouTube and I wanted to hear a certain song, uh, Battlefield by Blind Guardian. So I typed that in and what came up was a pony music video of the song. And I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, the audio will be good. And I clicked it, and it primarily consists of footage from the first two episodes. It made the show look a lot more dark and action-oriented than it is, but it got me to watch the first episode. Mm-hmm. And we all know, in being a brony, I saw the first episode, and then, and you don't really need to finish the sentence. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just goes from there. Okay, so, well, funny enough, the second question, uh, no, the third question is, how did you become a fan of the show? And I'm guessing you already told us but if you have um if you'd like to elaborate on it well uh originally i went and looked into some my little pony chat rooms uh looked at some forums uh what although what originally got me uh into the community was the tumblr community seeing the the tumblr ponies and how people were having to able have these ponies interact in a way that was still amusing to the audience it wasn't just oh look i'm role playing as super sparkles which is like my double alicorn ta- time lord saiyan and also a pokemon master don't forget about that <laughs> okay oh uh, yes having we, an alicorn re- oc ain't that bad right yeah. <laughs> well okay recently we actually published an oc where we we tried to make the worst oc we could possibly imagine <laughs> and we uh-huh. succeeded <laughs> yes, if you scroll back a bit on Ask oh, Pun, uh, the character is named Running Gag. <laughs> She's a uh, mm-hmm. a marathon racer who suffers from bulimia. <laughs> what? I can I can totally imagine this character running, and there's this running in the '90s playing in the background. You just have to see the picture because it's really funny, and I'm following. Oh, it's it's a full pun. reference. And I just realized the horrible pun in the name. Yeah, oh, God. I love it. It's 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 my favorite kind of joke. It's a time bomb joke. So you you think you get oh. it, and then you pause, and then like a minute later, you're like, "Wait a minute! Oh <laughs> damn it! Yeah, it's it's a double. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> you are terrible people for creating this. Well, well to be fair, fair mark, so. they might this be terrible, is- but you're still laughing. I don't know who's worse. I'm trying to understand the cutie mark. It's a bucket. It's a bucket. Of course. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but why? Because what what else is she going to... Because because she's bulimic. Uh, Do you know what bulimic is? Okay, okay, okay. There you go. (laughs) Delay reactions. That's... that's Hence running gag. (laughs) You know, you should have left Dan in the dark and let him think about it. (laughs) Uh, my favorite is when uh, someone asks, "Oh, so what? So why is Pun's cutie mark a sensor bar?" And if they're in a chat, I like t- pointing them to the first comic, and then we all get to hear their head hit the desk. <laughs> I still remember reading that one. I was like, "Okay, never mind." <laughs> oh, boys! So, um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, uh, as I spin it off, uh, the the it's it's a fun hobby for me. I'm managing a lot of people. It's a great resume builder too because I've been working on things for the project that are helping me develop new skills. It's a lot of social interaction. I've made a lot of my online friends through the project, so I don't focus on oh, oh my gosh, I love watching a little girl's cartoon show. You got to be able to spin it in a more positive way. I work with a whole bunch of artists based, uh, creating a comic based on a, a popular intellectual property. Hmm. That's the called way. euphemism. <laughs> you no, should. but still. No, 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 no I mean, it's your, your, okay, your South but, Pole. But have you ever went to someone and said, uh, and if they ask you, what did you do? Didn't you just give them a direct answer and say, I watch My Little Pony? Uh, th- th- have you ever done that? Uh, I'm in management. I don't give direct answers. 
No, but still, Robert, I, I think that answer is really well done because, well, instead of saying, I watch a show for little girls, you said, I manage a group of people who, are, who enjoy a show for little girls. Now we are making a comic based on a popular intellectual property. Oh, even better. I must remember that. <laughs> oh, oh, what is it? Lord of the Rings? Because you got to bear in mind that when most people ask you that question, they don't really care. They're just being polite. <laughs> mm, that is oh, true. Right. Yes. So they that, it's that not ex- that's one thing a lot of bronies don't know is that when someone asks, "So, what do you do?" they're not asking you to vomit your life story at them. <laughs> they're looking for a one to two word question. You're supposed to return the question and then the conversation moves on. Well, that's because if that's in case you want to avoid talking about what you do, but if you just want to give a short concise answer and you don't care about what people think what you do, you, you give just a simply short, say concise- yeah. Give a short, concise answer, and then if they ask further details, okay, but you need to check. Are they just being polite or are they genuinely interested? Personally, I don't – you know what? They can be either polite or, or genuinely interested. I am expert to give short answers to people I don't know. Mm, no, it's because you're from still. Spain. <laughs> no, you know what? That's what? the problem. We don't know how to give short answers to anybody. We love to give long answers. We we are the kind of guys that whenever we win an Oscar, the guy who is going to pick the Oscar, he takes a, a full on paper, like uh, a four size paper of speech, and he starts talking and never shuts up. Uh, <laughs> I'm going on the Spanish. I should probably go on the Italian. Hey, what do you call it? A, a what do you call an Italian with no arms? I uh, don't know. What do you call an Italian with no arms? It's going to be something involved in Spain. I know that. Speech impaired. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm, well, giving, I'm giving that one. <laughs> Robert, you should also act as a comedian because you kill. Okay, here's the thing. People are always telling me, "Oh man, you should be a comedian. You should be a comedian." But here's the problem: being a comedian is a horrible career. You either make it super big or you're working nightclub to nightclub traveling all over the country making pretty much the same as what you'd make at Burger King. That is well, true. have you considered it as probably mm-hmm. an extension to your hobby, like perhaps going to brony conventions and doing brony stand-up comedy? Oh, no. I, I'm staying away from the brony conventions, and I'll tell you why. It's what I call the main six phenomenon. When you get five bronies together, they generally act as a group would be expected to act, where you've got a bunch of people in the same demographic who share an interest and thus probably share other interests, like, you know, what other shows do they like, stuff like that. And they generally have a nice civil conversation. When you get six or more bronies together on a, for, on a fandom based around the Internet, they, you tend to get the people who forget that just because the group is from the Internet doesn't mean you can act like it's the Internet. You start getting the folks who are always waving their phone around. Hey, guys, check out this video. The guys who you say hello and they vomit their original character role play at you. The people who are very big about, oh, is it my costume amazing? Is it my costume amazing? And you see like seven other the exact same costume because they picked it up at a booth five feet away from you. The point is, is that bronies in large groups tend to forget social eloquence. Um, for that matter, actually, have you met any other bronies in real life? You know what? Oh, yes. Uh, okay, but regarding that, that's not just bronies. That's every type of nerds. I mean, I've seen that happen at anime conventions. I see that happen at comic conventions. People, when dragged into a place where there are no inhibitions, they, they don't care about what they think, they lose all means of social uh, norms. Oh, if anything, well, yes, however... Bronies is still, at the time I made that decision, was still a very new fandom, and it had not yet developed the filters to handle that kind of thing. If you go look at other fandoms, like you said, the anime fandom, I go to, I've gone to anime conventions, and they, they you still, still get those individuals. The social norms in that situation have developed ways to encourage those individuals to shut up. Maybe in your place, to, not in mine. I can't tell you that. I don't go to anime conventions anymore after what happened the last time. Oh boy, it was dirty and ugly. Yeah, uh, and smelly, very smelly. Mm-hmm. True, true. You could say it was a real Spain in the ass. <laughs> oh, oh, now you're now oh, you're for, now you're forcing it. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I need to ask Robert here. Okay, where do you come up with your materials? Because okay, I don't remember who said this, but pun is the worst form of comedy out there and you made it into an art style well a pun is the lowest form of comedy if you didn't think of it first (laughs) 
Well, <laughs> um, I, I have a question regarding uh, your your selection of the questions for the blog because it's obvious that the, the blog is Ask Pun, so it's obviously run and inspired by the questions you receive. Um, like, how many questions did you get on a not daily but on a weekly basis, uh, more or less? And what kind of um, criteria do you follow to say, oh, I'm going to pick these questions, I'm not going to pick these questions? Well, we get about 20 questions a week. Hmm. I, I, I would say that of those 20, 10 are uh, immediately get the rejection letter because there's something like, hi, or, hey, pun, what's up? Or, hey, pun, uh, would you like to uh, meet me? I'm a blue... And they basically give their character description in a very pathetic attempt to get us to draw their original character. Mm -hmm. Th things like that. Okay. So we have a standardized rejection letter for that. You know, it's okay. a little, you know, uh, thank you for submitting, yada, yada. We can't use this for the following reasons. You know, commonly asked question, not safe for work, stuff like that. Uh, then okay. uh, we have other ones where it might be, you know, we've had the question received before. So generally we get about... Uh, four to five good questions a week. And mm, so, but in asking what I do is I try to make a script for all the ones that are genuinely good questions. Group similar questions? Okay, well, here's something. Here's a message for those who run tumblers. Okay, if you put like seven or eight questions in one frame, no one's actually reading it. Okay, they're going to read the top one and move on. You can get away with maybe two questions if you angle them and keep them visually interesting. But if you have a post that's just nothing but a list of questions, we're not actual. No, nope, we, you know, the readers are not actually reading them. It's so true. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm partially guilty and, as well, though. All my questions are themed. So if you read the first question, you are you have read all of them. Yeah. So why bother probably, posting I'm, the others? You're, you're just I'm wasting like this space. Dude with a hand oh. right now going, am I the only one here who reads the questions? The only, uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, my reasons to put all the questions in there is because I don't want to, uh, I want to acknowledge every single person who donated the movie to Movie Slate. That's the only reason. Like, if people go and see their, uh, their icon, uh, of their Tumblr account, they're like, oh, look, there's my donation. Uh, okay, so here's something you can do then. If they have an icon, why don't you just, collect all the icons and put those together around the question around the movie submission not have each of their the individual speech bubbles that because way you still show their icon i but like you don't uh no pl please continue continue but then you aren't spamming with all this empty space because bear in mind tumblr is a visual medium that you're working on and let's face it a lot of people simply aren't going to read the text I like so, the, I like the uniqueness of each one of the questions. I and I find it really difficult to pick one of them. Uh, so, so I am like, no, I just prefer to show every single person's way toward the the donation. Sometimes it's really interesting. Sometimes it's really cookie. Uh, I, if I'll do that, I will do this. I will do the same with the with the anonymous questions. Yeah, they are all the same icon, but they are worded in different ways. So that's okay, why well, we, we one we don't accept anonymous questions because oh, otherwise I'd be getting a hundred questions a week and they would be mostly <laughs> spam. I you know, I started accepting anonymous questions for the first three months and then I decided to turn anon off for the exact same reasons. Like <laughs> I, I get five questions a week with movies late uh, with anon turn on. I will get like 30. That's insane. Oh Nobody can manage that. That's why I decided to turn it off as well. Right. But, but among the 30, how much of the 30 is spam? Um, to be honest with you, not many. Uh, the thing is that it's always the same guy sending movies o over and over again. So I have this very dedicated person who sends a lot of Anon uh, uh, suggestions that it's never a spam because it's always suggestions for movies. So I want, it became spam because there's just too many, too many donations. Right. So generally, I make the uh, scripts for as many of them as I can. And bear in mind, those then go into the production queue. The artists pick which ones they like. So it's not about me saying, hey, this artist should do this comic. No. The artists look at this giant list and they'll see one like, oh, I like that one. I'll make that one. Hmm. You give them freedom. So that's what that's what determines what gets <clears throat> made in the comic. I've had some scripts I've made like, oh, I love this script. No artist has reserved it because they don't like it. Uh, have uh, you ever had a collision like multiple artists take one at the same time? No, the res the reservation system uh, pretty much rules that out. Because uh, um, I don't know. I noticed that you did the organ donation pun twice. That was because I wrote the script twice. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see. <laughs> okay, and I was um, wondering because maybe uh, multiple artists would have seen it. I want it. I want. No, I want it. I want it. And then they just compete for it or something like well, that. Well, there there have been bumps in the. There have been things where someone didn't understand the reservation system. They put didn't put their name down correctly. But there's like very few incidences of that. We've gotten them smoothed out. And let's face it, most Tumblr folks don't remember the comic more than two months back. <laughs> True that. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, but some of them really sorry, uh, stick. Oh. That's why I gotta say some of them really, really stick. I want to make a. Uh, I wanted to make another question, if that's okay, Norman. Go ahead. Okay, please do. Yeah, uh, regarding Pan's design, is that uh, it's a very simple design with just uh, like three colors that you have the uh, the red, the brown, and the black of her cutie mark. Her cutie mark is just a black line, uh, but. At the same time, it's also very iconic in that you can put that in a silhouette and you can recognize that's pun, or you can put her colors in there and you go, hey, that's pun. So, uh, who came up with that design and uh, when, uh, how many designs did you have to go through until you decided to go with that one? Well, there was actually only one design. I said to uh, the artist, okay, uh, the cutie mark is just going to be a single black line. Uh, I didn't even say if it was going to be horizontal or vertical. I just said a single black line. And uh, how how you should draw the pony. You'll be drawing this pony a lot. Just draw uh, design the pony in a way that's going to be easy for you to draw. Because I, I did not have a specific something in mind for here's how I want the character to look. I'm creating the jokes and I'm going to trust in the art, artist's vision for how they create it. And you told me that the, the cutie mark is not a sensor bar, which is what I first thought. Like, it's a black line <laughs> sensor bar. I, that's, that's where my mind goes. I see a black line, I immediately relate it to a sensor bar. So, what is it? You don't know? You need to go and read the very first I have comic. Not, you James. know what? I, I, I have been following Pan for like uh, a year, but I didn't manage to catch up with the first ones. Okay, I, I will do the honors then. I will find the very first comic and link you it, and then we'll all get to hear Actually, your better yet, I will tag, I will link him the uh, her cutie mark origin story. But while, while you do that, let me ask you a question. Earlier in the interview, you said that you have about 150 artists working for you? Yes. So how do you gather them and how do you keep them in check? Well, fortunately, the system is uh, set up so that if an artist like isn't producing anything, producing anything, it doesn't cost me anything. Uh, how it's set up is that the artists produce uh, however much they want. They have no deadlines, and as they have no deadlines, uh, you know, it, it does limit like the ability to do collaboration because you know if you have three people collaborating on a comic and <laughs> two of them. Two of them work on it, and then one of them was like, oh, I'll do it later. Well, if there's no deadlines, I can't get it to work. Okay, uh, James, here's the link. We're all going to hear James. No, I guess, I guess. I, I, that was me Go laughing. for it, James. Go no, for it. I already checked okay. it. Well, okay, I haven't. So let me see. One <laughs> oh, God. That's so awesome. It's like an atomic bomb just went off in your head. It's not awesome. It's like... Ba- mind breaking and like f- face palming. God no, it, damn it. Okay. <laughs> oh, to wow. me, it's awesome because, well, it's kind of not her fault that she has a cutie mark. And, well, the teacher did ask, so <laughs> totally oh, worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so oh, yes. good. Yeah. So, in terms of I, keeping I, artists in check, I have to bear in mind that everyone on the project is there to have fun. You know, that while artists are paid, it's not at a level where anyone is doing it for the money. So everyone mm-hmm. is doing it for fun. And oh, as I such, see. that inspires them to really put their best effort into the project. Everyone's doing pun for fun. So um, let me get it straight. If I remember right, you said that you charge an artist one, for a panel $1.50, right? No, I pay them $1.50. Oh, yeah. you, you pay- uh, you paid him. Yeah. So it would be fun, no right? It's like, okay, you draw this and you, you have to pay for it. <laughs> we'll want to oh. work for you. Welcome to Pun Platinum Membership. <laughs> oh, somebody seems to be enjoying himself. <laughs> if, you, if you get this package, you are going to get something that I touched, like this clip. Here, I touched this clip. That means it, mean, it, it has more value than all your unborn children. <laughs> No, Robert, you should do this like prank next year. And on April first, you just upload ten posts saying you will need a pun platinum membership to view this post. Uh, so, uh, one interesting bit of data here: people ask, "Well, why is it a dollar and fifty cents?" I'm going to send you a little uh, graphic here for why the rate is a dollar and fifty cents. Because the issue is, is that right now they're paid a dollar and fifty cents, and that's the optimal. Because 
if I was to offer, say, 2 or $3 a panel for the comic, there would be people wanting to join the project just for the money. Because let's face it, bronies as an audience tend to really need money. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to even look at your Tumblr dashboard without seeing someone saying, oh, someone please commission me. I need money. I need food. I need electricity. Things like that. I am raising my hand saying that, yeah, that's right. that's me. So <sighs> if those people, if people were doing the project just for the money, what level of quality would they produce? They would do the absolute minimum necessary to get paid. True. Versus a dollar mm-hmm. fifty, where it's they're not doing it for free. But the dollar fifty is like a little extra bonus. You know, a lot of the artists Incentive. get paid in deviant art points, for example. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, you know, I've I've put about two thousand dollars into the project so far. So wow. it's about wow. Yeah. So it also shows the investment of the project manager. A lot of projects collapse when the people who are doing the hard work, uh, not that I don't do hard work, but they're doing very labor intensive work, uh, when they have more invested in the project than the person running it, then the person running it might just walk away when the responsibilities start to pile up. So it's me, it's the dollar fifty is uh, symbolic. Another way to put it is it puts the project at the bottom of their commission stack instead of the top of the trades and request stack. And it's better to be the slowest car in the race than the fastest car in the parking lot. <laughs> I like that. So basically, your mindset for this is let them have uh, avenue to earn extra money. And if they want to earn a lot, they do a lot then. Am I right? Yeah, I've, I have some artists who have made three, $400 on the project, but they're very prolific. As I say, you're not allowed to make a comic unless you're going to have fun making it. Yes. Ah, I see. So, for and example, quality... if, uh, but like like what Robert said, if you are going to do the comic and then you go to the project manager and you start bitching and moaning and complaining, yes, stop because you're clearly not enjoying yourself. You're suffering with it, and you should well, stop I, doing it. A good way to do it is to paraphrase Jitterbug, one of our more famous artists, and he said that a dollar fifty is a pretty good deal for getting to draw what he wants, how he wants as much of it as he wants and when he wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a really good point. That is a really good point. Yeah. Another element of the project is that we have three founding principles. Uh, The first is that we use our popularity for good. So it's not about, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to use the project to make a bunch of money. I'm going to use the project to get famous. The project at its core is about introducing our followers to other interesting tumblers. So we do a lot of crossovers. Uh, Second, is that there is no monetization. There will never be an income on the project. No donation button, no ads, no no begging for money somewhere, nothing. The only flow of money is from me to the artists. And what that does is that eliminates any problems of, okay, someone sent us a dollar. How do I divide that among all the artists and people who have contributed to the project? Yeah, I see that's fair on, well, the artist side, but... On your side, you really are spending a lot of money on this. Because yeah, but he can afford to. I'm... Yeah, true that, true that. But this, still, this is my primary like... hobby. You know, I don't go out clubbing or drinking or you know drive a really expensive car or Play go on you know, long vacations. Yeah, when something is your hobby, it's something that you're willing to pour a lot of time and money into because you enjoy it. It's it's not yeah. something that you look on as a as a burden, I suppose, as a financial burden. It's something yeah. that you're like, you know, I love doing this, so I'm going to put some money into doing this because it's it's you know I've you enjoy, it. yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, fifteen hundred a year is an entertainment expense. Yeah, you would like uh, actually, Robert, is it safe to say that uh, you know considers more than a hobby, but more of a passion as well? Um, I'm not a very <laughs> passionate person. I'm a very logical and quiet person. But yeah, no, you know, I, uh, I I can completely understand where Robert is coming from because I E-N-T-T. am the kind of I I'm, I am the kind of guy who also enjoys things by taking them seriously. It's clear that yes, this is his hobby. I'm pretty sure people are wondering, oh, if it's his hobby, why is he taking it so seriously? Well, some people enjoy taking things seriously. They love doing that, and I can totally see where Robert is coming from because I come from the same place. I like taking things seriously and approach them that way like in a very organized manner and you know what hobbies could be more expensive and this is from what i know this is not terribly expensive like it's like uh, you say a dollar 50 per drawing 
and you are helping getting people out there. You are promoting them. You are healthy, helping them out. Every time, every time Pan has a comic uh, featuring Movie Slate, I get 100 new followers. Mm-hmm. Wow. So wow. it works. It totally works. I mean, this is a very good thing he's doing. So not only he's enjoying himself, but he's helping a lot of people to poke their heads out into this uh, place that Tumblr is the verse. internet. Yeah, into the Tumblrverse that is dominated mm-hmm. by so many popular other Tumblr uh, blogs. So this is a big help. You know, I thought that since a lot of people say I'm doing it because I love it, I do it because I, I really, really love it. I want to know whether you actually share that kind of drive inside you because I mean, you, you really love doing these kind of things, helping others and also expressing yourself in this way. Well, I will, I'll be honest. The primary thing I enjoy from the project is that I get to be a nice boss. I love it when all the project members are like, oh, man, working for Robert is fantastic. He's so reasonable. He goes out of his way to make sure that we're having fun with the project. It's great because I'm, no one's going to be saying about that me about that about me professionally. Yeah, it ha- you have to compensate being a... That's not a word. ...in real life with being a nice guy on the internet. That, that, that's right. Cool. Well, because I handle the I kind of people so that other managers simply can't handle. The kind of people who are, well, under management, we call it theory X. People who don't really mm-hmm. want to work. So you have to compel them to work. You know what? If you were into other fandoms, you'll have to still be. A- That's not a word. I have the I have the feeling that this, uh, this yeah, this fandom has the, the the. That's not a word. But you know what? We attract a very a lot of very good, very nice people, and I think that kind of wraps onto you as well. I think that's also mm-hmm. about just that this uh, this fandom is very artistic based. There are lots of artists in this fandom yep. compared to a lot of yeah. other fandoms where you have people who couldn't put pencil to paper to save their life. Mm, that is true. That is true. The anime fandom, as for example, the anime fandom is more merchandise based than it is art based. Very true. Mm, that is true. And part of the when you say hobby, I am one who is also guilty on that because I do buy a lot of trading cards and it's true. I sp- Spend all, for a year, I spent about a thousand bucks to get the cards that I need. And I can see the similarities in what you were saying. Uh-huh. Well, this is also my primary social mm-hmm. network at this point. I've met a lot of my friends online through this project. So when you get the artists, how do you get them? Like, do they come to you? Do you seek them out? Like in James' example, how do you get him? Uh, I don't remember. I think James <laughs> came to us begging and pleading, please let me be a part of something greater than myself. <laughs> I am a worthless individual. Please give my life meaning. Uh, actually, there is a... I don't really remember. No, wait. I think I kind of remember. Uh, he says he doesn't remember. what That's code for he's blocked the memory out. No, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, that is the part that I remember, actually. Um, what I'm trying to remember is that I think there was uh, there was a, a script that had movies late in it. So uh, you guys published it, and all of a sudden I started getting people coming onto my blog, and I was like, "What the hell is going on here?" So I went checked, and I and I was like, "Oh my god, Pan did a comic of movies late. This is awesome!" So I think I got in touch with you, and and you were like, "Yeah, I have a couple of scripts with uh, movies late in them," and I was like, "Oh my god, that's brilliant! Great!" And then I I had to move to Scotland. Uh, so I uh, I like got disconnected from uh, from that call because I wanted to get more in touch with uh, with Robert and with uh, the Palm Project. Then when I came back to Spain, I was kind of like uh, not begging for attention, but begging for uh, for assistance on how to get more people on uh, to check movies late. So uh, first thing I did was check Equestria Daily, but once Equestria Daily posts your blog, that kind of like stops there and. There is there is no way to contact them back because they are kind of like not iffy but inconsistent in the way they talk to you. Sometimes they love you, sometimes they don't want to hear anything about you. So one day I get dragged into a live stream where uh, Robert was discussing uh, project managing with uh, with the guys that do Askpan, and I started really liking the tone of the conversation, the things they were talking about, the way he was uh, leading uh, the project and all that. And by the time I managed to get uh, time to talk with him, the live stream was over. So I was like, next time I catch him, I catch him in a live stream, I am going to uh, latch onto him. So next live stream, it happens, and lo and behold, he sees my name on the on the chat, and he's like, James, come in on the call, and then call, and then uh, I went at him on the call in in the live stream, saying, man, I want to be part of the project. You 
I manage this very professionally. I I don't think I'll be able to do any of the scripts, but I would like to be part of it because I like the way you are you are organizing things. You seem to have very clear ideas. You go to the to to what mat to what's important. So he was like, sure, okay, and I still have to read all of the scripts and pick one that I want to do, but I'm so busy with commissions that I haven't ta- had the time for it. Thankfully, like Robert says, there are a lot of artists that are uh, happy to work, so they, they are kind of like covering me as I clear my commission queue. So, so yeah, that's, I would yeah. say that the majority of our artists, though, do come from blind invites. We send, uh, basically, there are various uh, uh, groups on DBNR and uh, Pony Tumblers at Reblog Artwork, and when we see one that's not, I see one that's not on the list, I add them to my invitation tracker, and about once a month I go through and we, they, I send out just lots and lots of invitations. Like, hey, you've been identified as an artist that we, you know, we'd like to have on the project. Here's some basic stuff about the project. Here's a link to information about the project. Here's a video about the project. Uh, let me know if you're interested. Mm-hmm. And we actually get a fairly high acceptance rate. Almost like so, all of uh, my interactions, I came in in by surprise. Continue, Norman. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, so, do you have any rejections because they don't have the time to do it, or like they oh, of had the course, uh, I'd say about uh, two thirds say no, but about one third say yeah. Amazingly, okay. a high number of people say yes, and a lot of the time, someone will say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just too busy with school," and I say, "Okay, would you like another invitation in three months?" Well, these people don't even know what they're going to be doing in a week, so they say sure, and three months later, they get another invite. And then they say, oh, I'm still too busy. Great. Would you like another invite in three months? And they say, sure. And then like a year later, after getting like four (laughs) invites and delaying it, they finally say, "Ah, fine, sure, I'll join. Because they didn't expect the project to actually still be going. Oh, my. You mentioned that you get like 20 questions and you filter them out. So it's maybe 10 to 5 questions a week. So how many questions do you have in queue? Questions, what do you mean? Like like number of available scripts or uh, in the posting queue? Um, um, in the, sorry, uh, maybe, maybe I should. Well, maybe there's good questions. Like, how many questions do you have in script form, and how many questions do you have in the queue? No, I don't track it like that. I'd say that we have currently about 150, 160 available scripts. Uh, in the posting queue, like number of, of comics ready to go, we have 125. But in terms of tracking, so this thing isn't tracked differently as a question versus a story versus an independent uh, joke. Oh, I see. So, like the one you sent to James and me, where how Aspan got her cutie mark, that is considered to be storyline. Oh, storyline or just you know independent? Yeah, that's the thing. Is like they're, they're asking if this is like a story-driven uh, arc that's going on with Pun, oh, or if it's just a several, single entry. We do have several story arcs that we have run. If you look on Ask Pun, there's a link on the side that says "Check out the major story arc." Yeah, I know about the story arcs, especially the one about the greatest joke ever told. But um, I was wondering whether the Cutie Mark one was part of a story arc or just a standalone. It's just tagged as a story comic. So if you click the, the option to see see all the story-based comics. Ones that basically okay. build upon each other. Okay. So I'm looking at your Tumblr page right now, and I didn't notice the side panel until you told me about it. And this is a good way to start looking at Aspan because, well, if you've got no idea what's going on, just click on the site and you'll soon find out. So, uh, Robert, just uh, one last question. Since you did say that you're a project manager in real life, um, I know that you try to keep the life separate, but have you brought anything or learned anything through Ask Pun that you have managed to carry into your real world career? Oh, indeed. Uh, we're currently working on a uh, new data system for the Pun Pony project, which will in- uh, incorporate the script, uh, production queue, script archive, finance tracker, staff listing, and staff file into one coherent system uh, using Microsoft Access. So I'm actually learning Microsoft Access which is the double. Ah. I've taken uh, some training systems that I'm using. For example, Ask Pun, we're currently developing uh, orientation videos and such, which I found is uh, very useful. So I can uh, you know, create basically a narrated PowerPoint, put it onto YouTube, and then just send it to someone and say, here, watch this, wow. which yeah. saves me a lot of time. Because if you send someone a PowerPoint and say, here, watch this, they don't. Mm. They just <laughs> glance at the slides and don't listen to the narration. Yeah. I'm getting the feel of Ask Pun 
it's fun on the outside and it's really meaty and really business-like on the inside. So you mentioned you have a YouTube. So besides putting training videos on it, do you use it to put any comic videos on it, like um, dub comics? We, we don't do uh, comic videos at the moment. We do have a plan to do a bit of an uh, animation project very far in the future. But for the moment, uh, making a video comic simply has a very low return on investment. The number of hours and effort that will go into it compared to the entertainment that it will provide and such is very low compared to generating a comic. Yeah, for example, so... we had just ridiculous trouble. Uh, our our first video system was uh, back when we didn't have enough material to make a daily comic was something called Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight. It was a comic by uh, Undead Niklos. Oh, I remember that. And we oh basically were going to narrate it. So we had uh, Pinkie, uh, someone who was a Pinkie Pie voice actor, and we did open auditions for all the other roles. And since it was going to be basically just a narrated slideshow, we didn't really need uh, any sort of animation involved. But the number of just bad, no word encapsulates how bad it was other than just bad uh, the, the submissions were people saying here just pitch shift me here just uh please remove echo you know please oh, no. uh yeah cause, yeah D- uh sketchy is there a remove echo button no there's not i mean there's yeah there's 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 means to reduce echo there's means to do audio processing but if you're doing something that's just you know for fun or for a fan project you probably don't have the time or don't want to take the time to do the kinds of things yeah. these people are asking. Yeah. Basically, audio it processing is. can make something better or less terrible, but it's not going to turn yeah. terrible to good. <laughs> if that yeah, was the case, days. why would I need audition? Who's the guest <laughs> on this show who said you can polish a turd as much as you want, but it's still a turd? Well, I just said it right there. I think that was me. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Someone, oh, come on. Uh, I've used that phrase a lot. Actually, I used that in one of our training videos is, is saying, saying that in terms – it's for the writing collaboration saying that others can help you polish your idea, but it has to have a solid foundation. A polished turd is still a turd. <laughs> yep. uh, I don't remember who, but it's still a good analogy. And with yes. voice acting and stuff, um, I've done voice acting for our previous guest, Scribbler, and she – she didn't ask much. She asked me to do this line and do it however you like. And you have to be responsible and you have to have the want to make it sound good because you can read the script however you like. But the thing is, if you don't put any passion behind it, it's going to be crap. And also the equipment is important because if you have a bad microphone like I have now, it's not going to be any fun for the listeners. Well, we also did an yeah. animation that was called Pinky, uh, Reasons to Party. And it was basically uh, an asset salvage system where we went through the uh, the DeviantArt Vector Club, uh, got a whole bunch of Pinkie Pie vectors, got permission from every single artist to use it. And then it was going to be you click the button and Pinky, the, the picture picks up and you hear a Pinkie Pie voice actor saying a reason to party. Like, you're not wearing pants or the pre party or the post party for the last party has become the pre party for the next party. Or the the wow. guards ran out of noise citation tickets. Quick party before they get more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very it was very funny, but getting a good Pinkie Pie voice actor was very hard. We we had really good one lined up, and then the and we, we were like, okay, the voice actor is the least replaceable talent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this. We're, we've got the voice actor lined up. We're gonna have the video all ready to go, except for the voice actor lines, and then we're gonna then we're gonna say, okay, please send us the lines now. You know, trying to treat the voice actor's time with the, the utmost respect. So we had the animation completely finished. It even had voice placeholders. It was me just going, the post party for the last party has become the pre party for the next party. You know, stuff like that. Just but just so that when it came time to insert the voice actor's lines, it was just going to be swap this file for that file, and it's good to go. Well, ah, you know eventually- what? I'll, I I would love to for you to leave the, to leave it like that because then we will sound like Marvin from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The way you said that, it would be brilliant to have Marvin invite you to a party. That sounds <laughs> yeah. awful. But the problem we then had was the uh, the the voice actor who then sent it in sent it all done in one take, and her amplifier wow. died between the start and end. So the starting voice acting was like this, and then it was like at this volume at the end. So you really can't fix that. It went from I Pinkie Pie. Try. 
I see things about this when especially equipment tends to be a jerk on you. Sometimes it really can determine on you. It depend on your passion. Because once I was filming some green screen footage in my house and I was using these very bright halogen lights. And it ha- it so happened that my house power supply isn't very good. So the lights would run for exactly three minutes before my fuse box would trip. What? So I was <sighs> like, okay, I have to film the entire thing in three minutes in one take. And I have like all the switches tied up all to a master switch. And if I turn it on the wrong sequence, it just blows all the fuses. So I have to reset everything. Good lord. But eventually after like 10, 15 times, I was already sweating and dying. I managed to nail it in that. And as soon as I finished the footage, you was like, cut! Pop! And then the whole house wow. just went off. But the kind of passion that, you know, especially for someone like me, because I love doing videos. For people who have passion, sometimes the equipment that's failing on them, they'll just hack the crap out of it to get it to work again. The issue was that it, came, was, it was very difficult to put together. We had to go through a lot of audio editing. So we do have one animation planned for the future, but it's uh, something I think is very interesting. Have you ever, you've seen how things that are retro are popular now, right? Yeah. Like, oh, oh yeah, old true. school graphics, that's popular. So we're going <laughs> to do an animation very retro we're going to do a pony animation in the style of the 1960s cartoon cargo clutch i need to google search this wow i have never heard of that show before we're all showing our age now (laughs) we have all never heard of that now i want to though it sounds Uh, like my best guess from the cover is like it's a racing show no no um Uh, it's a really old show i've seen this before but i can't put my finger on it uh, the animation is somewhat nightmare inducing because it was made very much on a budget. So in order to make it, what they did was they would have a still panel of animation and they would film someone's mouth saying the lines and then overlap that onto the still panel. So you have this animated character oh and then the mouth is just moving as a video. Oh it is God. fairly nightmare inducing. Yeah, yeah. If you, if, for those of you who may not know about that, if you have watched the movie Pulp, F- Pulp Fiction, the <laughs> chapter that starts with uh, Bruce Willis's story when he's a kid, he's watching an episode of that uh, cartoon. It has the same style of animation. It is that. I, it is that cheap. I've just watched it, and oh my God, Robert, you're right. It's nightmare inducing. <laughs> It's a, it's a human so, mouth in a cartoon. So we're so picture that all we need is the voice actor and a uh, and the, the still panel and the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> and the mouth. And we've got a whole bunch of still panels. So we'll just you know narrate some of our old jokes. We just need you know a uh, voice actor with a webcam. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm trying to find the recent party terrifying. animation for you. I didn't tag it properly, so it's a little hard to find in the archives. Well, I can just imagine how nightmare inducing that can be. Like, oh god. But still, IMDb says it's 6 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, while you look for that, I- I'm going to try and think of other questions. So I'm noticing in some of your recent... Sorry, uh, first thing, congratulations on getting 9,000 followers. That's really awesome. Uh, thank you. That was actually a very uh, old comic, and I'm like, hmm, we just hit 9,000. Wait a minute, haven't we done that joke before? I'm pretty sure we have. And so <laughs> as an option, I thought, yeah, okay, I just go back, grab that comic, uh, and uh, just redo, redo the text, add a little uh, Tumblr effect, and it's good to go. <laughs> awesome. And before that, um, I'm looking at Aspan eating meat. So any reason why Aspan is a meat eater? Well, uh, that will actually be explored later on, but basically, uh, in the story, pun is the seal on the killer joke, and that draws <laughs> uh, ener- oh. draws draws energy from three places: her, her uh, draws uh, energy from puns, from her body, and her mind. So she has a Pinkie Pie like metabolism. Mm. Horses can eat meat. Horses have a digestive system where they can practically eat rocks. <laughs> okay, that explains I the rock know. farm. <laughs> yeah, p- ponies have a very pow- – equines have a very powerful digestive system. You know, cows are the only ones that have one that's e- uh, a bit better. Yeah, they have a very long intestinal tract. Yeah, and there are uh, there are historical cases of horses that have survived on meat. Okay, think about this. The horses that were taken on the first Arctic explorations, they didn't exactly bring grain for those horses. That would have weighed too much. They fed the horses meat. Oh, my. Oh, but still, but still, oh, my. But so, Robert, have you found the picture yet? Uh, I'm still trying to find it in the archive. It's going a little strange, but but I can also link that to you later. But basically, our animation is uh, 
you know, we, we, we do a limited amount of animation just because the return on investment for the animation was very low. It got mm-hmm. like six, it got like 60 uh, notes compared to what a lot of other stuff gets. I think there's a generic the re- uh, attitude of an inter- internet user when they scroll, they see puns. It's like, lies and shots and epi jokes. Scroll, 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 video, screw it. Scroll, 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 yes. scroll. Yeah, Tumblr mm-hmm. does have a 30-second attention span, and that's being generous. Yes. Well, it's also about what kind of comics uh, get them to uh, actually click the like button. For example, Flufflepuff always gets a like. So things that are mm-hmm. cute and very quickly, uh, e- or rather easily digested as humor, are they tend to provoke a, oh, okay, I'm going to click that, versus mm-hmm. something where they had to think. They're like, oh, that was neat, and they keep scrolling but they don't hit the like button. Uh, so you can't course. really use the like button uh, as too much of a... Uh, Measurement gauge. Definitely not okay. in Tumblr. Mm, true. No, like buttons because don't I... really work as a good gauge for anything. No, but still, you, you can tell because like running gag here, it only got 66 notes. We, right. all, take, we, we all had a good laugh at it because um, the joke was kind of, well, <laughs> mean, but still funny. And it but as Robert of... said, it was pretty much a time bomb joke. So basically, after they scroll probably 10 posts down the road, they're just going to burst out laughing for no reason. And I don't think they'll be bothered to go back up and press like. Yeah, right. but still, it's kind of like the joke there. Like, it's a time bomb joke. So people, are, well, they don't get it at first, but when they scroll down... Or some people, they want to understand, so they keep looking at it until they understand. But still, it's, like like Robert said, it's a time bomb joke. Okay, That's so here's the animation. I found it. That's the thing when you have, like, over 600 comics in your archive, it starts getting really hard to find them. Oh, my. <laughs> that is... Well, that is interesting. So it, it was pretty simple to put together. It was, you know, because here's here's my advice. If you're if you're going into a new area in a project, like let's say you're normally a, a normal comic maker and you want to do some animation, start small, start simple, start in something that augments your existing competencies. So if you're like, okay, well, I'm able to draw great ponies. I think I'm going to make an animation like Double Rainboom. No, start small. Start. Can you do a five-second animation that's just mouth movements? Can you do something that's just a walk cycle? Sorry. Yes. So yeah. So it's like fifty of those. So it, it's it's just, it's a pretty simple animation to make. But the the reason you want to start small is you want to encounter all those errors and problems when you're still on something small and it's easy to fix. Versus if you're doing something huge and other people are really involved in it. Mm, I see. Uh, that makes sense. So I'm also wondering, how many artists do come back to do more art? Like, do you have any prolific artists or well-known artists for us pun? Oh, yeah, we've got quite a few. Uh, I'd say our most prolific artists are Hewison and Anna Ritchie. Uh, those are our two most prolific. Uh, mm-hmm. Our most famous is probably like Nightmare Moon S, Jitterbug. Uh, Gashaboka is now, who, who does some amazing artwork, is on the project. I'm scrolling through here and I do see different names and different art styles. And like you said, you want to promote them. So have you gotten anybody who is new to this? And let's say this, they have only... 15 or 50 subscribers or 50, 50 people following them. And after doing this, have they come to you and say, wow, thanks, man. Like after this, I got a spike in followers. I do get that. Yes. The one problem we've had is the criteria narrowing for, you know, what do we cross over with? Because if something, okay, for example, here's the criteria is that one, the comic Tumblr is just the comic. Like you can do some reblogs. But if the whole front page of your comic is just random reblogs of things that you think are interesting, we're not going to send people to you. That's why it's always a good idea to have a Tumblr for what you're doing a Tumblr and a mod Tumblr where you you can reblog whatever you want. And that doesn't interfere with the updates of your nom of your regular pony tumbler that you're right. Playing. Yeah, no, no one, no one cares that the mod just got a new Pinkie Pie doll. Yeah, nobody people, cares. People don't want to see the reblogs of that one Rule Thirty Four artist that you follow. <laughs> They don't want to see that, especially when your Tumblr is safe for work. You have to keep them separated. Well, as I say, the critical ratio is one to two. You can do one reblog for every two original pieces of content. Now, when I say original pieces of content, I don't mean like a text post. I mean like actual content that people, you know, stop and look at. 
Yeah, visual content. Or if you're going to make a text post that is going to be like a wall of text because you're telling a story, at least put a picture on it. Make sure, uh, illustrate it. Like Tumblr, like the internet is most primarily a visual media. If I want to read something, I'll buy the newspaper or get a book. Okay. Another thing that I've seen cost Tumblr followers is that if you do like a 10 photo set and you stack them all vertically, so someone who is following you has to keep scrolling to get past all of them, that's trying to control that user's experience. They're not going to like that. So that will actually cost you followers if you think that you should be able to control their dashboard. So if you have, you know, like uh, 10 pictures to post, post them nicely and compactly so that if someone's interested, <coughs> they will click and they will slideshow through it. Uh, another thing is with wall of text posts, there is an option where you can set where you can add a little option that says read more. So if someone's actually interested, they'll click read more. But otherwise, they'll just get like one line on their dashboard. If you if someone has to scroll like three or four times to get past your wall of text, they're going to unfollow you. Yes. Yeah. Really Even though they have a very short attention span, you have to treat the Tumblr followers with respect. That's true because people are following you and you are entertaining them and you need to respect your audience. And you if have you don't respect your audience, they're not going to like you. Important uh, so issue no. there is when you think that, okay, people are following me, but they don't want to just see what you think is interesting. If you want to point them to a Tumblr that you think is interesting, okay. You know, put some, hey, here's a Tumblr you might want to check out. But just reblogging everything from that Tumblr if one, if they already follow that Tumblr, they're then getting spam on their dashboard of you just reblogging it constantly. And two, if you aren't contributing anything to it, if you're just saying, huh, this or oh, this is neat, people aren't really going to be interested. So separate out the comic from the mod. Because mm, simply put, people don't care about you. First and foremost, don't, that doesn't mean don't promote your tam, your mod blog or don't tell people you have a mod blog. No, have a link to your mod blog. Tell people and make sure that you label it as safe or not safe for work. And But promote it. Put it there. People might want to follow the guy who's behind the pony. Not in that way. Uh, God, that could be interpreted in so many wrong ways. But no, people will want to follow and want to see your mod blog. You don't have to force it on their throats. Right. But also bear in mind, they when you have a mod blog, they want to see things you know related to the creation of the comic or at least to the artist. But just random, lol, check this out videos from the moderator – no one's going to follow that. No. Because bear in mind, Not people true. have their own ways to get these videos. There are, are other aggregate sites. They, don't, they aren't going to want to get their information just from you. That's true. And those are good tips. One more thing. If, if you do a crossover with someone, don't reblog immediately. Because if someone is already following both the tumblers, what then happens? They see it twice. Uh, That's annoying. Also, if someone does one of those comics where they do like 50 different Tumblr ponies with like a little headshot or a tiny little picture of them and people are like, oh, I'm going to reblog that and they just reblog the entire thing. Well, if someone's already following a lot of Tumblr ponies, what happens? They're then seeing that picture over and over and over. And bear in mind, if you annoy someone, it's very easy for them to unfollow you. But a lack of content or a small piece of content is not going to get that. So, for example... Uh, Meriwether, which is a comic we plan to do a lot of crossovers with because it's a great comic, did one of those things where she drew a whole bunch of uh, ponies in the scene, including two of ours. Well, while it would be nice to reblog it, we know that people would see that a lot. You can reblog a picture like that as just a link. So when you go to the reblog option, say, okay, post this as a link and then write a description saying, oh, Meriwether of Ask Meriwether has you know drawn – has you know done the small bony business association that featured marigold and sunshine morning go check it out very small compact piece of content people can still like it and it will still go towards the uh the, that that comics note count but it is not spamming their feed mm, those are good tips because I, I personally am not a tumblr guy and i got no idea how to work tumblr and i i think james you has do tumblr, a lot don't of you? this well i do but i what what Sorry. I do tumble, but I got no idea how to do it well because I, you know, I'm just it's just something I do out of fun, nothing more. Well, but here's I, the number one piece of advice I give to new Tumblr artists who want to make a Tumblr comic. One, 
identify why you're doing it. Are you doing it just to entertain others or are you doing it for personal fame? And both of these are fully acceptable reasons. Saying that you want to do it to get personal fame and famous, that's fine. Saying that you just want to do it to entertain others, that's fine. But be honest about it because you'll use different methods and techniques based upon that decision. You always want your decisions in the comic to be moving you towards that goal. If you want to be famous, you would want to do like a lot of links to yourself, a lot of self-reference, you know, uh, focus a bit more on the moderator, but do it in a professional way. If you're willing to do it to entertain others, ask yourself, uh, would you be willing to do this if you never put your name on it? Uh, okay. Th those are really good tips because I never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. uh. Another thing is, you know, what can you offer? Like no one really wants to see your role play timer where you're just doing a whole bunch of text posts. And when I say no one, I've seen not a significant number of people statistically. So you may have like a you know, anonymous is sending you in tons and tons of questions and you think you're popular, but it's one guy who just <laughs> wants some attention from anyone. And he's probably spamming lots of tumblers, not just yours. So mm -hmm. do, you know, some sort of graphical representation. Uh, for example, no pony ask McLovin is a very text based. He doesn't do that much artwork. He does some, you know, copy paste kind of stuff. Mm. But when he answers questions, he at least has a little headshot of the character and he does a facial expression on it. So even a facial expression is enough to be an artwork. Mm, okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm seeing the spectrum of how to do stuff right now. Like, I've always thought that when you do a Us Pony Tumblr, it's going to be like what James does with uh, Movie State and what you do with your Us Pun. And now that you mentioned a headshot of a pony answering the question, they can work too. Do you have any other OCs besides Pun? or The comic has five OCs. We have Ask Pun. We have Marigold, who is Pun's cousin, the business pony. We have Sunshine oh, they're all, Morning. They're all your OCs. Yes, those are all our, our, ah. our OCs. And some of these originated as like a one-shot gag character. We're like, let's make that permanent. And others were intentionally specifically created. So, for example, Marigold was originally just uh, the random interaction pony uh, on ask that that Chlorine came up with for one that required just any other pony. And we decide, yeah, let's make that Pun's cousin and just uh, do some other stuff. Uh, Melanie and Sunshine Morning were one-shot gag characters. And I said, you know, what? I like that character design. Let's make that a permanent character. Rubik was intentionally created for a bit of a darker story arc later. He was actually originally intended to be the romance interest for Ask for Pun Pony and later oh. decided let's make him uh, rather let's, – let's reduce his age a bit and make him the romance interest for Melanie. Uh, I'd say that of the characters, you know, they each have their own darkness. They each have their own light. Uh, for example, Melanie is like the reverse of a cutie mark crusader. She got her cutie mark when she was ridiculously young, so young that she doesn't ever remember a time without her cutie mark. And so she uh -huh. kind of resents it. She never got to explore and find out what she's good at. Uh -huh. To see Sunshine Morning, she has narcolepsy. That's why she always wears sunglasses, because ponies can sleep standing up. So she'll just be standing there and oh. fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, what okay. about Dr. X-Ray? Is he also an OC, or is he from somewhere else? He was he was from another comic that we were doing uh, a series of crossovers with. I think, okay, this is a great comic. Uh, unfortunately, that artist then ran into personal issues. A uh, particular one was the the breaking point was where the artist had approved a really huge, like seven day long, seventy panel script, you know, huge, wow. big story arc, and had approved it. We started production, and then two months later, the artist said, "I changed my mind. Don't make that script." And we said, "No, you gave permission." And she said, "No, I really don't like the direction that's going. Don't make it." And bear in mind, we're making all the artwork for this. We just got that artist. Uh, approval on how to use their character and mm -hmm. i was like okay i'm willing to cancel it but we have to arrange for some sort of metric or a uh, system so that this doesn't happen again and the artist refused the artist basically wanted the ability to revoke permission on any script at any time so it came down to okay we're going to run a breakup arc between the characters now because we can't really work with you either you work with us on this or we go Wait, independently. No, no it's Pun had to play with X-Ray? You haven't finished reading it, have you? Pun broke up with X-Ray long ago. Oh. <laughs> I need to catch up with a lot, a lot. Yeah, uh, if you click on the uh, major story arcs, uh, you check out the uh, A Broken Heart story arc. Okay, I'm going to read that one. Damn, I've got yeah. a lot wow. to catch up with. Yes, uh, Pun the does way... have a new boyfriend now. The way you're saying it, it's like how DC or Marvel do their comic series. With story arcs. <laughs> Stories are the foundations for a lot of things. And, um, well, 
uh, there's no other questions actually. Just before we leave, uh, can we have a little roundup? Which is your favorite? I mean, for the rest of us, all of us here, which is your favorite pun ever from from us? Oh, pun favorite pun ever. I'd say it has to be the first one. The what is her cutie mark? <laughs> well, like, because, okay, but yeah, because that because it just sets the tone for the entire comic. <laughs> I'd say the second favorite one is big on the story is her profession. Now, who who's read the comic? Who knows what Pun's official profession is? She's not Sorry, a cartographer. I, I she just... comes up with names for places. What's the name of that? To Pony Mist. Uh, ah, pony, pony Mist. Yes. Pony mist. Yeah. Now that's the yeah. that's the actual word. It's an actual profession that has the word pony in it. Because I went and I found this giant yeah. list of every profession and field of study, and I searched the word pony, and that came up, and I looked at like, huh. <laughs> and I looked at like, hmm, place names. Huh, all the names in Equestria are puns. That fits just so perfectly. You couldn't write it to fit better than that. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Well, honestly, from my side, I just discovered us pun, and I, I got no idea which was my favorite. And, well, I'm just going to say the one that you linked me of how she got her cutie mark in that series of comics. <laughs> well, we do I'm have... Whole, that is pretty we awesome. Have a whole, we have like 660 comics posted so far. Ooh, so close to the devil's number. <laughs> yes, and... Uh, <laughs> you should do the 666. Oh, it's right. actually, yeah, we're it's actually above that number. That was just the last time I looked, which was a while ago. But uh, we also, for example, uh, if you're going through the archives, you'll start encountering a comic called Ask Tickled, P- or, uh, Tickled Pinky. Which uh-huh. is uh, a certain artist he was doing. This was back when uh, we had about 600 followers. And uh, I saw this comic. I'm like, wow, this is great. He's doing lots of puns. It really fits for Pinkie Pie just to be up on stage saying these bad jokes. And I oh, said, no. I tell you what. Yeah. And I said, I tell you what. How about uh, you've got like 60 followers? We've got 600. How about you post your stuff on Ask Pun instead of your own little Tumblr? So you'll be second billing, but your audience will increase tenfold. And he said, that's amazing. But I then had to work with him because he had been just getting the vector assets from DeviantArt. And I said, so do you have the artist permissions for each of these? Uh, no. So I had to mm-hmm. set him up with a, uh, uh, a permissions tracker for every vector, for every uh, asset he had. And he just, you know, sent the standard letter to all of them saying, I used this in a comic. I forgot to ask permission. May I have your permission? And 99% said yes. So that fixed awesome. it very quickly. But that made went him from being an art thief to a uh, a legitimate artist. Hmm. And then oh, uh, yeah, so awesome. is that the same series as the one where Shirley tells bad jokes? I don't know. I haven't seen that one. But so so you'll encounter some of that. Uh, back in the day, we actually did reblogs of some very popular artists like uh, Veggie Fifty Five and Toxic Mario onto Tumblr because they had no presence on Tumblr. So I said, you know, let's just try. I didn't really understand how Tumblr worked back then. So I'm like, okay, your comment hasn't been on Tumblr in any sort of official capacity. Uh, give us permission to publish it, and we'll do the effort of editing these, you know, DeviantArt style comics into individual panels for Tumblr and post and post them on this comic. Uh, eventually, once we had enough material that we were gen- really holding our own, went through and removed all that other stuff. So the comic That's has been through a lot of infrastructure changes over the past nearly two years. Hmm. I, I wouldn't have imagined that. So you've been running this for two years now. Oh, well, um, it, the project's the first comic published on February second, two thousand and twelve. Ah, okay. That's an amazing. Wow. That's that's an amazing achievement. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I like to look at it as like we have more comics in our buffer than most Tumblr comics will ever have total. Wow. You know what? That, that's really this, an achievement. You know what? Then this is almost as long as our show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, just James and uh, Sketchy, do you have your all-time favorite puns? The thing is, I've never read through Ask Puns, um, you know, archives. So I, I don't think I could give a qualified answer to that. <laughs> Well, uh, now we've got we've got a homework assignment for you. Then <laughs> I can't, uh, hey. it says terrible things about me as a person, but the only pun comics that I've seen are the ones involving movies late, because are the only ones that I have exposure to. Because I have I don't have time for anything else. I'm so busy with commission work that I cannot sit down and say okay, I sit down in front of the computer and the first thing I do is I switch on Photoshop. And I, I don't check Tumblr for like until two hours later when I have finished the sketch and the inks of a commission. And 
that's that's when I am like, okay, well, oh, I didn't even open Firefox. So I go to Firefox, I check Tumblr, check messages, see if there is any reblog, and I I will read the the newest posts of uh, Ask Pan. That's for sure, but. The ones that I really remember are the ones on Movie Slate because they are the ones that I have to read thoroughly and then reblog, make a proper in character comment for Movie Slate, and then uh, tag it, then make sure that it's in the final category and then post it on the blog. So those are the only ones that I remember. Uh, I really, you know what? I really like the the one where Movie Slate and Pan are coming out of the theater, and. Uh, pun is like, you know, I should never judge a book by its movie. <laughs> <laughs> that one was really fun. Nice. That one was really, really good. I, I call it the uh, the Starship Troopers effect. <laughs> Who caught that movie? <laughs> oh, the I book was still, great. The movie was, as I say, the book and the movie shared about as much as World War Z did. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or Jurassic Park, The Lost World, like... The only thing they share is the title. God, the Lost oh, World is a, it's a terrible adaptation. <laughs> oh, that's true. That. That's not a word. Hate that movie. Oh, wow. That's not a word. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. CD Bell's on a job. Remember CD Bell got when, I found, when I found the Aspen, the first ever Aspen coming I saw was the El Mints of Harmony. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so that was... Okay. Ad- Funny thing about that one is uh, back then, uh, one of the artists who was uh, submitting, Los Arai, uh, he was one, you know, doing you know the sketch level, so he was submitting it just as line art, and I colored it. And oh, wow. I, I stupidly that one I colored it all in the same layer. <sighs> oh, okay. The mortal sin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, uh, okay. So I col- I do, so I a bunch of Loserai's earlier color work, I colored that. So well, that. somebody needs to start somewhere, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. and you know, since then so the standards have gone up. Works, you know. After you render it out into a JPEG file, nobody cares how you did it. You done it. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. But so my anyway, all-time uh... favorite ask pun has always been, "Why did pun send me one fifth of a cooler oh, of an ice box?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's just upsetting. I, I was I was in university and I had to contain myself when I saw that. Do you know what? Well, with that grown, let's move on. And before we move on, thank you, Robert, for coming on the show. Uh, it really means a lot. And I'm sorry about the technical derps. Uh, it was to be expected. So anyway, uh, before we move on, uh, where can they find you? Well, you can reach us at uh, askpun.tumblr.com. If you just Google Ask Pun, we're the top link. There are pages where if you want to reach me, such as if you'd like to apply to be an artist on the project, which is lots of fun, there is a link on the side of the page that says learn more about the Pun Pony project that has links to uh, what our standards are, what kind of things to expect, and a link to email me. I'll put that in the show notes. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. And my shoutout goes to you, Robert. Thank you for coming on the show, even with all the derps. I, I really appreciate for you sticking around. Well, you are quite welcome. Wow, where did that come from? <laughs> you can so, do voice um, acting as well. He is a magician. <laughs> so, and thank you to you, James. Um, I've been really derpy with this uh, interview and this episode, and I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> it's okay, man. We all have technical difficulties, but we muscle through them. I completely understand you. During the last stream that I did, Photoshop crashed like 50 times. Wow. And I thought he wasn't oh, yeah. going to work back to work again. Mm. Sketchy yeah, knows he was there. Uh, and, screw uh, this, I'm going back to MS Paint. <laughs> <laughs> back to basics. And um, well, and to you, Sketchy, thanks for helping me out with this. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. And Daniel, thanks um, for being there. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for putting up with and, me. Oh, no problem, man. And Daniel, what about you? Uh, well, I would like to shout out uh, first of all to. All of you here for coming on, and especially Robert, because, well, it's a dream come true to meet the owner of one of the funniest blogs I've ever read in my life. Well, I, I think you just enjoyed me verbally lampooning James. <laughs> it's very easy to verbally lampoon me. No, After I mean, all, is... the Spaniards are a walking joke, so you have half the job done. <laughs> the thing is, I don't have a Tumblr account, so I don't have this big, this big home feed. So I used to jump back and forth between tons of Tumblr pages. I used to love Ask Surprise, and I read... Um, what do you call it? I, I followed uh, Ask Pun and I followed Ask Internet Explorer Pony and a few others. And uh, what happened is that Ask Pun was the one blog that I kept going back to because it just had so much content again and again and again. It was so good. It just stuck but in the it, head. 
it updates every 24 hours. Yeah, and then I can show it to my friends, and my friends will be like, they get the jokes, you know, they can turn off the whole pony part of it because they're not into ponies, but they'll still, they'll still, you still hear their hit table because it's just <laughs> funny beyond the brony fandom. It's not mm-hmm. entertainment just for bronies. It's just plain awesome humor I can share with my friends. That's the benefit of using what some people would call the the you know the lowest form of humor. Is that okay? You might call it lowest form of humor, but at the same time gives it the widest appeal well, i'm not the, i'm not the most intelligent person in the planet so i need humor like this to keep me entertained when people tell jokes that i don't get i'll be like all right i could need to go read ask pun now <laughs> it may be the lowest form of humor but in order to cater to people who can't really laugh at high forms of humor it's really an art and i do thank you for that you're quite welcome and uh, one last shout out i have to give to is to the whole committee for cantalot university you guys did it amazing job and the keynote was a blast it was a pleasure working with you all mm, that's awesome uh, be, sh- be sure to follow them and it's going to be really interesting and James what about you uh, well I want to give a shout out to Sketchy for being here with us no thank you my good he's, sir he's, he's an awesome guy of course and of course give a shout out to Robert for being such a good sport and coping with our unprofessionality which contrasts uh, uh, heavily with his professionality uh, and uh, finally, I want to give a shout out to every single person who chimed in and helped out with um, my charity stream last week, which was a huge success. And I wouldn't been able to do it without them. So I want to give a sh- uh, shout out to them. No problem, man. Mm-hmm. And you, Sketchy? Ah, I would just like to give a shout out to my friends that helped out with the Aspertia Tumblr. Um, they're all fantastic people, so... Big thanks to them. Uh, and just a shout out to you guys as well for having me on again. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, that's pretty much no it. Problem, no problem, Sketchy. You're awesome. And, well, I dare say that you're a friend of the show. Thank you. It's okay, Sketchy. You're here because Cyril wasn't available. <laughs> 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 oh, burn. <laughs> but, you know, you know um, Sketchy was, has one up over Cyril. Um, sketchy nose felt. That's right, I do. <laughs> yeah, that is right. So, Robert, what about you? Who's your shout out to? I'd like to give a shout out to the poor, poor individual who has to edit this because it means they have to listen to you repeatedly. Uh, anyway, anybody else? I'd like to give a shout out to all the hardworking members of the Pone Pony Project. And after I've thanked that 1%, I'd like to thank the other 99% of the members of the Pone Pony Project. <laughs> 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 I see what you Bud did Bud Pony there. presents Are you the one percent? <laughs> <laughs> wow oh, Robert, talking when you're about on... me Yay <laughs> When you're on a roll You're on a roll <laughs> uh, <laughs> much like I'm, st- I'm still a nice boss Like you'll see Our recruitment videos Is the The pony version of me Whipping the artists Chained to their desks Yelling more comics And this is hilarious To the artists Because I'm such a nice guy and he's on a roll, he's on a roll, much like butter. <laughs> wow. But anyway, Robert, any more? Oh, that's it. Okay, cool. So if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at thembsshow.com and daniel at daniel at thembsshow.com and the doctor, charlie at thembsshow.com. Also, you can reach us on Twitter the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie Bot will interact with you. She will complain about editing the show and, well, basically stuff with the show. And you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Norman Sanzo. Well, I'll tweet about food, post pictures on Instagram and link it to Twitter and also whatever tickles my fancy. So, Dan, what about you? Well, if you want your dose of perky pessimism and know what's a, a bit of what's happening behind the scenes of Canterlot University, follow me on Twitter at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E, for some good perky pessimism of the day. Trademark. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. What about you, James? Trademark. Uh, my Twitter is at James uh, Cork, and you can find me on jamescork.dvnr.com, and you can find me also at askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. I'll add that into the show notes. And what about you, Sketchy? Well, if you want to keep track of me, I am available on Twitter at uh, sketchy underscore sounds. Um, I'm also on Fiction as sketchy sounds. I'm also on SoundCloud 
as Sketchly Sounds. Uh, I also have a band camp that, surprise, surprise, as Sketchly Sounds. Although that's all is one word, sketchlysounds.bandcamp.com. But it was sound sketches. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm also on DeviantArt, sketchlysounds.deviantart.com. Um, and I think that covers YouTube. just about everywhere I am. Oh, yeah, I'm on YouTube as well as Sketchly Sounds. This is Be getting sure. rather sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, like I haven't heard that so, joke a million times before. Wow, so original. Yeah, but you know what? It's still funny. <laughs> to everyone else, yeah. To the one guy that's heard it like a million times, it's just like, yes, yes. And, be like, and get clever. ready, guys. I'm only going to say it once. I am Sketchy Sounds on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's, that's a good note to remember. One username, all networks. One username to rule them all. Go get yourself a dot com and actually just be sketchy sounds dot com and have all the appropriate links there. <laughs> I really it'll should. Be a mile, it'll be a mile long. And you align them to the right of the screen and it'll be sketchy sounds all the way to the <laughs> bottom and just the first part will be different. <laughs> I actually do oh, have, I mean, I've, I already have um, a, well, I have web space and I have a few domain names. I could actually do something like that if I really wanted to. Oh God! <laughs> maybe maybe I'll just get like not about maybe I'll just get a drippy me uh, short form link for where all my <laughs> and, and just make a page on my website website base that lists everything. And just be like drippy dot me scratch exams done. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Where do where do I find sketchy sounds? If you want the full list of my <laughs> omnipresence, yes. you can find it at sketchy sounds. I am everywhere. Uh, so anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Oh my! So Google.com anyway, slash sketchy sounds. <laughs> oh god! So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I have been Robert Patrician, and I still am, by the way. I and I have been so confused during the entire episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome back, James. And I have been James Cork. <laughs> uh, stick a cork in it. And I have sketchy sounds. And it's been a pleasure to be here. Uh, this this episode has been funny. Anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm going to strangle you. You could say making this episode has been quite a uh, episode.
anyway, look, we all know you have a different kind of. We all know you have a very different kind of poll you want to give Rarity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give her my my South Pole, if you know what I mean. Oh God, <laughs> Pidley, man, Pidley. What you have a North Pole? Yeah, I didn't know you're a unicorn. <laughs> oh, you, not, I'm, no, 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 I'm not a unicorn. I'm a bike. No, he's so ugly. That's his nose. <laughs> No, no, I literally have another horn. It's a <laughs> condition. I cannot go out in the street because of it. People look at me weird. Oh, <laughs> sure, yeah. Blame the blame the horn for why you can't go out in the street, not your crippling social anxiety. No, but I have that too. <laughs> it's a combination well, of it's both. Just, oh, it's a double whammy. It's going to make a wonderful outtake. <laughs> okay, anyway. What is it? Why do we need to make it an outtake? Leave me alone. I want to hide in the corner and just hiss at people that come close to me. <laughs> Okay, it should anyway, be like a the hide hitable. in the corner and cry counter on this show. Like, well, the thing is that when you, no. when you try and hiss at people, we can't tell if it's you're actually hissing or you're just being asthmatic. <laughs> I'm not being asthmatic. I'm making my impression of a Republican. Crip- crippling social anxiety <laughs> count. Ting! Then you hear the inhaler. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Anyway, um... Didn't I already give my shout-out? I think you did. No, um... <laughs> we move you're on. Twitter. This is the Where's Twitter. behind you? What's behind me? <laughs> I don't want to turn around. No, Twitter, Twitter. Oh, my Twitter. My Okay, you can find me. The janitor at, at the Cantalot Cinema. <laughs> you can find me. At, no, that is, uh, that's Hoover Sweeps. That's not.